In this tutorial, we'll cover a range of topics from basic farming principles all the way to genetic modifications of plants. There are five different ways to farm crops. First, portable hydroponics. Pros, it's early game, portable, and no piping is needed. Doesn't stir water canister and it'll last a long time. Cons, cannot be automated, rather large and colors the base. Requires external lighting such as the sun or grow light. Second, planters. Pros, early game, no piping needed, and it can also be automated. Cons, the water ports cannot be chained together, resulting in larger space consumption, and it requires external lighting. Third and fourth, hydroponics train device. Pros, you do not need alloys to build them and both can be automated. Cons, both require external lighting. The tray has no data port, but is space efficient. The device has a data port, but is not space efficient as it cannot chain together directly. Fifth, hydroponics station. Pros, built in light source for plants. Cons, require steel, cannot be automated and not space efficient. Here you can see all beds can be planted on simply by holding down the left mouse button with a seed bag. All beds can be watered by hand with a water bottle. However, the portable hydroponics bay requires a liquid canister to be watered and cannot be watered by hand. Note that in order for plants to grow, it needs a form of light, including the sun or a grow light. Regular lights will not work. In order to automatically feed a bed water, look for the liquid pipe symbol on the bed. Then connect a water pipe to a source of water. In this case, I'll place a portable's connector and a water tank to provide water. To know if our plant is happy, we will use a tablet with the plant analyzer circuit board inside of it. Once the tablet is turned on, you'll see some information displayed, which includes growth, breeding, temperature efficiency, and more. These stats can get confusing, so here are some things to look out for. Anything labeled efficiency is directly modifying the growth speed of the plant and can be used as an overall indicator of that particular stat. As an example, light efficiency is a combination of how much light and darkness the plants are getting. Going into more detail is the minimum and maximum ideal stats. This is the range in which your efficiency will be 100% or greater. An example of this is if a plant it has a minimum temperature of 19 degrees Celsius and a maximum of 30 degrees Celsius, and the current temp is 25 degrees Celsius, the efficiency would be 100%. Illumination is most likely the cause of the most confusion for plants. Plants require a certain amount of time in the light and the dark. Too much of either will kill it. This is displayed as light deficiency or darkness deficiency. If you start getting too much or too little of either, you begin to build up illumination stress, which will lower your light efficiency. Finally, located at the bottom, there are stats of the plant's maximum undesired gases and the present amount. Now, onto plant genetics. All plants have a set of genes which modify its behavior. Its genes can be manipulated in several ways. First, plants will mutate randomly. On top of random mutations, there are regular mutations that you can force to occur naturally. If you starve a plant of water for the majority of its life and yet allow it to grow to seed, its offspring will require less water naturally. In this way, you can manipulate mutations. There are also a number of tools that will allow us to unnaturally modify its genetics. All plants have the following stats. Growth temperature range, growth pressure range, growth speed multiplier, light per day, darkness per day, gas production, water usage, undesired gas resistance, and time until the plant takes damage. Note that plants can have different times for each damage type. If you're curious about what an undesired gas is for a plant, what damage types there are, or what gases a plant produces and consumes, check the wiki for more information. A plant sampler can be used to sample a plant without damaging it, and can be placed into a plant genetic analyzer in order to view the genetics of the plant. This can help determine if you should cull this gene line or to further work on it. The plant genetic stabilizer can be used to stabilize or destabilize genes, which will affect its mutations. This will make the selected genes either 50% more or less stable. However, when destabilizing a gene, all other genes will be unstabilized by 10%. A plant genetic splicer will copy a single gene from one source plant to another target plant of the same type. Beware, the source plant will be destroyed, and this process takes about 20 minutes. That's all for this tutorial. You're now a plant expert. A quick reminder that you can touch up on more information using the in-game station PDF with the F1 key. Thanks for watching.